So our next talk has a very different topic. We all know the problem. We go to a grocery store and have to um, queue in the line. We have to wait long times. And Mickey, Mickey Lombardi has a solution for that. Hi, Mickey. Hi. Hi, everyone. How's it going? How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. And you? I'm fine, too. I'm from Switzerland, streaming from Switzerland here. And where are you streaming from? Uh, I'm from Florence, Italy. OK, so not that far. Yeah, not that far. <laughs> <More> or less. <laughs> OK, so um, please start your talk about the yep. map of the um, supermarket wait times. Thank you. Here we go. Uh, well, I hope that uh, I hope until the end that this talk uh, wanted to be physically in front of a uh, public, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we are still in this situation. So I'm going to see a screen in front of me, but I hope to uh, see you next time in presence and to meet you all. Um, I hope to have time to uh, answer your question. Otherwise, uh, you will find me in the room uh, to reply uh, as, can I, as I can. <laughs> and, so uh, in this talk, I'm going to speak about uh, on my 2020 project, an open source project, to trying to help uh, people during the COVID-19 global lockdown that everyone affected. So uh, let's, let's start the talk. Uh, please let me introduce myself first. Uh, I am Miki. I'm, com I'm, I'm from Florence in Italy, as you may uh, know from my accent. Uh, actually, I'm a full stack engineer at Groens, uh, a digital company in Italy. And I'm also a co founder of the Schrodinger Hat podcast and the organization in GitHub, uh, where we are having fun on building something uh, open source in Python and other languages. Uh, of course, I'm in love with Python, but especially as I am Italian, I'm in love with pizza. <laughs> Uh, I will not post any link, any social link, but you can find me everywhere as the join or the join ninety five. And if you like, you can pass on my uh, website, and the link is michelombardi.com. Um, before to start, uh, let's have a look at uh, what we are going to see in this talk. Um, I divided the talk in four steps. Uh, the first one is an intro and uh, just to give you the context of everything. Uh, then we are going to start going deeper and just to show you how the architecture works and uh, how the cloud was. And then we're going to show you some APIs and especially Redis that saved my life in this project, uh, definitely. And then in the end, uh, we're going to have a look into the economical part uh, and the conclusion of this uh, project. Uh, I know that we are just programmer. We don't think about money, but uh, I think that for this project, money is it's a little, um, it's something that we need to talk about because it, it, it's, there is a plot twist. <laughs> so let's start. Uh, as you may know, in 2020, the things just fall apart. Um, I love this GIF that I found on G5 uh, that pretty sum the things up. Uh, wear a mask and get the vax is the mantra of this one year and a half. And, and when the uh, pandemic hit, everyone uh, was like panicking and no one was knowing what to do. Uh, no one was having a mask and stuff like that. So uh, not a great big deal. And for, for that, everyone, especially in Italy, the first uh, European country to have a lockdown, a national lockdown. Um, we we were just panicking, and everyone started to take everything from uh, the supermarket, the grocery store, uh, the pharmacies, uh, literally everything. And when you go to when you went to to those places, uh, you can have a look at the line and just think about how much time do I need to just enter and just to find something, if there is something to take. 
Um, I think that this issue comes to every places uh, during the, the pandemic. Uh, I talk about Tiffany because I'm living here, but reading about the newspaper and from the video all around the world, uh, back in the April 2020, we were just in the same, in the same boat. So the issue was that the day following the global lockdown, uh, every supermarket pharmacy were attacked by people in search of basic goods. And just immediately after the announcement of, of, of the lockdown in, in the country. Uh, so just to give you a little context about this project, uh, it's not for, it wasn't a project for, for profit, neither for commercial use, but just to help try to help people on staying safe and stay uh, away from, from the others, unfortunately. And because the longer you stay out and in contact with other people, especially in closed and ventilated environments, the more likely you are to contract the virus. So uh, my idea for this question was that. Uh, I just leave you the link, uh, you can find it in the slide. Uh, just that I uh, leave you in the Hero Python site, website. And of course, the project is now offline, but you can find the open source code that even the front end side and also the back end side. So, what was the idea? Uh, my idea was started from Google traffic API uh, because I, I was thinking, well, people are like cars and in, inside the car, there is a, pe a person <laughs> physically. So my idea was to collect some data from also Google API for places to just retrieve the time of um, the average time that one person stay into a place. Like uh, I'm going to the supermarket, I stay there for 20 minutes average for Google. And I was thinking, well, that's a good metrics, but yet it's not that much of data. So my, my thought was, what if I realize a map with those API and also older API that we're going to look after uh, and just give the possibility to the user, to the end user, to just give uh, a feedback, uh, a temporal feedback uh, of the store where it is and just with those feedback just uh, try to understand how much line uh, how much time we need to wait to enter those places and this is called crowdsourcing uh, it's a it's a pattern that uh, now we can find in the modern application and I, I, I managed to uh, gives the time uh, almost correctly, uh, at least on my local markets um, and also around the world uh, by mixing up those data from the Google API and from the feedback user, from the user feedback. And so you may know, you may wonder what's the map? The map is, it was like that, uh, it's showing up with just a full screen map uh, using leaflet and just a model to sh to have a getting start getting started guide to the user and uh, showing up the icon that, that the user can click and how the website working and how the progressive web app were working uh, giving also um, a frequently asked ask questions uh, just to uh, give the possibility to everyone to navigate the website and find the, the data that uh, they wanted. Um, it, sums up, it turns out that this website, this application uh, went around the globe and this is a graph. Um, the numbers are no, no matter for the numbers, but from uh, the late April to mid June, where the website was uh, alive for the emergency, uh, it collect those numbers from all around the world. And I'm so thankful to those users. And I hope that I gave uh, a little help to those uh, people. 
uh, started from April just for me, my family, my my friends uh, in Florence, and then go, it went kind of viral, I, I can say, uh, around the Europe first, and then around the the globe, like worldwide. <laughs> So let's dive into uh, the architecture and the cloud environment. Uh, before doing that, I'm gonna talk about the technology that I use, the stack. So of course, Python, uh, the version that I use was uh, 3.7. It's not uh, that much of important because yeah, you can run the, the project in every uh, Python uh, major than 3.4. And uh, of course, Flask, for the API layer, uh, Moodwiki and Nginx for the web server, Netlify for the front end side, uh, for giving the possibility to go in cloud and find the gem stack uh, using the CDN, uh, Redis, a big thanks to Redis, and Progressive Web App from Google. Um, let's, let's back to April 2020 at the start, at the beginning of this journey. And I, I, use, I was using uh, Raspberry for uh, put online everything <laughs> and literally everything into this Raspberry. Uh, I, I love Raspberry, by the way. Um, I was running front end, ready server, Nginx, Whiskey, Flask API, literally everything. And of course, for testing news, testing propose, and for Beta testing is very good. Um, it was quite fast for for me, and and also, I mean, the beta tester were just friends, uh, my mom, uh, friends of friends, my grandma, uh, the local priest, and, and so on. Um, after that, after uh, the first two weeks of the project life. Uh, it started to growing and it went viral a little bit uh, without doing anything actually, and and I needed to find a way to go worldwide uh, to uh, give the possibility to every user to find out the place nearby them or just find the place by searching it. So I went worldwide and my my I needed to to, to make a decision. Uh, if go to AWS for the cloud environment and spend all my money on that, or uh, try in different way. Uh, I choose uh, OVH, uh, cloud, and also DigitalOcean, as you may probably know uh, both, both of them. Uh, I choose, uh, in each case, a uh, virtual private server uh, with pretty the same uh, capacity and performance. Uh, Two gigabyte, gigabyte of uh, RAM and uh, thirty gigabyte of uh, disk memory. Uh, why I decided to go in cloud? Well, uh, because uh, after two weeks, uh, first of April, I, I got more than one hundred contemporary users and more than twenty thousand page view per day. So the Raspberry for I mean, I love a lot Raspberry, but it was dying. <laughs> I needed to do something. Uh, and also because uh, going in cloud, it permit me to have much better performance, uh, much better scaling horizontally, of course, uh, availability, and have a look in, into the future. Because as you may uh, saw from the graph of Google Analytics, uh, uh, around uh, May, uh, where literally the world went uh, in a lockdown, uh, even more users uh, came visit the, the website, the app. And for the future, it, it means uh, around 1,600 contemporary users and almost uh, 90,000 page views per day from all over the world. So uh, Raspberry can't have for that, unfortunately. So let's have a look also to a schema and how the management of those instances. Uh, as you can see from the schema on the right, uh, I centralized Redis uh, just for uh, uh, for a comfortable use for me. 
just to have all the data into just one Redis, and not just on in each instance. Uh, but I had uh, four uh, APIs instance uh, with Moodwiji, Nginx, and Flask API layer. Um, and of course, um, when, when I went uh, worldwide, I decided to uh, buy the instance in different data center in DigitalOcean. Uh, one in New York, uh, one in UK, and one in San Francisco Bay, uh, just to try to serve with uh, low DNS lookup to those domain. Uh, it just sort of uh, optimization and performance, uh, uh, just to try to care about the details. Uh, maybe I say too much that already saved my life on this project, but it's true. And now you maybe uh, see the why. <laughs> um, just to give you a recap of what the endpoint were, uh, on the right, you can, you can see uh, all the endpoints that I used uh, for geocoding uh, based on here and Google API. Here is a Microsoft alternative to Google, uh, to Google Maps. And the most important endpoint to get the estimated waiting time for a place. And, and then all the place uh, hold the place's endpoints to retrieve data from for the place, such as uh, the name, the location, the coordinates, uh, the geocoding, uh, everything about the place. And of course, uh, the feedback endpoint to the crowd for crowdsourcing feature uh, that uh, contribute a lot to um, make this project very useful for, for the user and for all the people. And in the end, just a little uh, endpoint to login activities such as trace error or message info, info just for, for debug it proposed. Uh, of course, every user data was anonymous, uh, compliance to the GDPR. And so no worry about it <laughs> because I, I don't know who was on the website or where. <laughs> um, and uh, on the API side, uh, thanks to Muigi, uh, everything was multi-threading. And of course, this is a good improvement for the performance. And, and this is a very good feature from Muigi uh, that is also implemented in Flask. Uh, talk about Redis. Um, I decided, I, I tried a lot, different solution to make things workable uh, with a good performance. And we were talking about 30 second timeouts for most of the time. Um, when I found out the good solution, it comes with uh, Redis. And Redis uh, saved my life by using the geospatial index and geospatial uh, commands, such as geoad, georadius, that's for searching purpose, and for setting also uh, a caching layer in Redis. And as you can see from the right side, uh, I put a, a little snippet of code. Uh, that is the core of the project. Uh, it's basically uh, get placing radius. It's basically find uh, the waiting times uh, in our radius from starting from a coordinate, and the coordinate where uh, where where from the user. So even if a place or just uh, the nearby places of the user. And red is very, very fast. It, this query, it took just, I don't know, maybe less than a second to retrieve the result. And it can have to, it can have up to 150 uh, results. And it's a lot to make, to put a market into the map. Uh, 150 market on the map are quite a lot, <laughs> trust me. Um, so uh, on every request that um, the user made to the backend, to the API layer, uh, every request was uh, on Redis database and cached in Redis uh, database with a TTL, uh, just to uh, give the performance at is best for the user um, because 
with those large amount of data, I never saw that amount of user in just one uh, progressive web app or just a website uh, that I made. So I was worried about and say, okay, well, what if I did not return the correct result or the request uh, starting to go in timeout? Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, I found this way, this solution, it was the correct way to deal with those amount of data and with those amount of traffic for, for my side. Um, let's have a look also uh, about the cost um, because I talk about all this data and all these uh, performance issue, but also about the traffic. Um, and I know it's not, um, Sometimes it's not a real topic for, for a programmer to look into the money, but uh, it's something that we, we should take care about to have also a more knowledge to build this kind of project. And I hope that I am, I would be a sort of inspiration for, for you or for the new developer and especially for the persons community. So let's have a look this entire journey from a Raspberry Pi to a cloud environment. Uh, apart from having a couple of Raspberry Pi, actually, uh, the cost uh, in 2020 was around $30, uh, maybe, uh, because it was before uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, came in. And so I, I can say that the cost was around $30. And also for the domain, you, I say that it was uh, for it wasn't for uh, commercial use or uh, any kind of money proposed. So I reused one of my uh, domain and just create a subdomain on that uh, because it was for just for personal use at the beginning, and then out of nowhere it went viral and worldwide. Um, this was the the prerequisite. Um, after that, for the cloud part, uh, I spent about $25 uh, per month for the cloud usage uh, for the four instances in DigitalOcean and uh, OVH. And the total is around uh, $75 for three months of usage. It's quite a lot, if you think, but for those data, for the, the goal of this project, uh, it seems good and fine to me. Uh, the purpose was higher than the money. Um, also, a little note about this: about this, uh, the traffic was uh, was quite sustainable uh, for this project, even if uh, there are so many users on the page, maybe for the caching layer. Uh, but anyway, uh, even in DigitalOcean and also. In OVH, uh, the traffic inbound and outbound was free until uh, 10 gigabytes. So that was a, a, a big uh, advantage for me just to find out and try to make everything better and better every day. And in the end, uh, having also the front end side that I not talk about in, in, the, in this speech, but uh, th there was <laughs> um, on cloud on a CDN. It allowed me to satisfy uh, more than one million of users and more than 2.1 million of session in three months of life, uh, with more than uh, 1,500 on average contemporary user. And those are very big number for me. Uh, number no matter. It, I mean, they're just numbers. Um, the purpose of the project was higher than money and number. I'm very happy to have the chance to uh, help uh, the people from all around the world and also people of the open source community help me to uh, build this. And I would like to thank also uh, one of them, that, that is Daniel Defoe from Canada, for helping me at the beginning of this journey for the accessibility on the website and into the design of the first model that you saw uh, in the previous slide. 
And I would like also to thank the open source community that is give me almost everything I can say. And I'm very happy to give it back uh, as much as I can. And, and of course, I'm again, I'm really pleased to have the chance of helping people all over the world. And I hope that uh, with this talk, I can uh, in my little inspire someone else to do the same and share the code, share the knowledge, help the next one. And yeah. And of course, the code is still available on the GitHub, as the link show you into the slide before. And after that, thank you for listening. Um, if there are any questions. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Very interesting talk, very interesting project. Um, I hate queues too, of course, and that's a <laughs> perfect solution. <laughs> so um, I see people are typing questions. There is already a first question um, about ge geocoding. Why didn't you use geocoding from OpenStreetMap? I think you used Google and uh, what was the second? Uh, here. Here, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, OpenStreetMap was having some issue for uh, geocoding for the same place. Uh, compared to Google and here. So I decided to go m safely to those API uh, of Google and Microsoft for just uh, uh, data alignment for, for the end user. So that's why. Okay, at the moment there are no more questions coming. But comments like super inspiring, very <laughs> inspiring talk. Thanks. Oh, so, thank you guys. <laughs> so I think there are no more questions at the moment. So thank you very much again. Thank you too. Have a great and day. See you. Have a great day.